the ongoing lecture series on extraction of natural products, till now we have discussed certain basics and fundamentals of an extraction process. We also discuss about certain traditional techniques such as maceration, decoction, digestion, infusion, succulate extraction and so on and so forth. We also discuss about certain modern techniques, their advantages over traditional techniques and these modern techniques were microwave assisted extraction, ultrasound assisted extraction, pressurized solvent extraction, supercritical fluid extraction, pulsed electric field extraction and so on and so forth. So friends in continuation with the lecture series, today I am going to start with volatile oil extraction. I am sure all of you must have observed the fragrance of different flowers like rose, lavender, jasmine and other flowers also. It is not only the flowers that have fragrance, there are other parts of the plants like leaves in case of mint which is also known as pudina, eucalyptus, basil leaves or tulsi leaves or in some cases roots like vetiver which is also known as khas or valerian and in some fruits also such as citrus fruits, oranges or lemons. So all these flowers or different parts of the plant they contain fragrance, they are known for their fragrance and the fragrance of these plant parts is largely due to the presence of a constituent which we call it as volatile oil. Though the volatile oil is not a constituent but it is mixture of different constituents, so we can say the fragrance or the aroma of whether flowers or any other part of the plant which contains uh, uh, the fragrance is largely due to the presence of volatile oils in those parts. And to extract out these fragrances or the components of the fragrances or in total if we say the volatile oil from these parts, we require certain specific extraction techniques and this, these are the techniques which I am going to discuss. So in this lecture, I will just give you a brief definition of volatile oils which are also known as essential oils. Then we will discuss what are they used for, what is the usage of volatile oils and then we will discuss about the extraction methods which are broadly categorized into traditional techniques and the modern techniques. Now coming on to the definition of volatile oils, as I told you that these are also known as essential oils because they are responsible for the, for the essence of that particular plant or the part of the plant which is, which contains them. Because these, the name volatile oil also signifies their volatility and they have volatile properties like ether. Therefore, these are sometimes also known as ethereal oils. So we can say that volatile oil, essential oil and ethereal oils are synonymous. So by now, we can say that these oils have specific aroma and these are volatile in nature. But this is a very broad definition for these important mixture of components. International Organization for Standardization that is ISO in its document number 9235-2013-2.11, they have narrowed down this broad definition and they give a more specific definition for essential or volatile oils. According to this definition, an essential oil or a volatile oil is a product that is obtained from natural raw material of plant origin. Mind you, volatile oils are not only obtained from plants, but they are, we, we also find them in certain animals like musk deer. The fragrance of musk deer is largely due to the volatile oil present in, in its glands. But according to ISO, Volatile oils are the product that are obtained of natural raw material of plant origin. 
and they, these oils are obtained by specified methods such as by steam distillation. In case of citrus fruit, oil is obtained by the mechanical processes or we can obtain essential oil by dry distillation process after separation of aqueous phase if it is present in it by any suitable physical processes. So, this is the definition that was given by the ISO which narrowed down which, which, which is more specific in terms of the origin of the oil that is it should be from the plant material and it should be extracted either by steam distillation or by mechanical process or by dry distillation and water should be removed from the end product. Now, we move on to the uses of these volatile or essential or ethereal oils. Now, since these are known for their fragrance or aroma, so perfume and cosmetic industry is the biggest consumer of these oils. These oils are used in manufacturing different types of perfumes. Their constituents are separated from these oils and these different mixture of these constituents is, are being prepared or in cosmetic industry we use these oils to give a specific fragrance to soaps or shampoos, creams and other products. Apart from perfume and cosmetic industry, aromatherapy is also the second largest consumer of the essential oils and we can use aromatherapy for cosmetic purposes wherein we, we enhance the appearance of the skin. We use aromatherapy uh, for massage purposes wherein we relax the muscles, we, we tone down our muscles and aromatherapy is also used for therapeutic purposes wherein we treat certain central nervous disorders like lack of sleep or anxiety or in calming down your brain. Then these oils are also used for therapeutical or medicinal purposes wherein some oils have exhibited carminative action like oil obtained from fennel or caraway or coriander all these have carminative action that is they they expel out gases from our stomach and help in relieving the flatulence certain essential oils are also used as analgesic and the most common example is the oil obtained from clove which is also known as long in Hindi and we know that clove oil is largely used as a dental analgesic. Apart from these as I told you that these essential oils are also used for CNS disorders in order to treat insomnia which is lack of sleep, anxiety in, in uh, tranquilizing our uh, central nervous system and so on and so forth. These oils are also used in pharmaceutical as well as food industry and in these industries it is these are largely used as flavoring agents, as odor masking agents and essential oils they have a very prominent antimicrobial action as well and therefore these are also used as preservative in certain products. Now these are the uses that, uh, that are meant for man but why do these plants produce essential oils now these essential oil act as defensive chemicals for the plants they protect the plants through uh, against action of various bacteria or other microbes certain though majority of the volatile oils have uh, agreeable uh, fragrance or pleasing fragrance but there are certain oils uh, like as that of valerian which has very bad odor and such oils also protect the plant against various herbivorous animals. Now we move on to the extraction techniques that are used for extracting out the volatile oils. So as I told you that these extraction methods can be broadly categorized into traditional as well as the modern methods. These traditional methods involve four major techniques like expression, distillation, enfilarage and solvent extraction. Now expression technique can be further categorized into manual expression 
as well as the mechanical or the industrial expression methods. Now, the manual method largely contains the traditional techniques like sponge methods, Codella method and a slight improvement of these two methods into Aculé method. <coughs> Whereas, the industrial or mechanical method includes sphue matrice method or special sphue matrice, pelatrice method, brown method or brown extractors or FMC inline method which is also known as food machinery in uh, machinery corporation inline method. Distillation is largely of three types hydro or simple water distillation which is the most primitive uh, primitive technique uh, amongst the three distillation techniques. Then we have water and steam distillation and third one is the steam distillation. Another interesting traditional technique is enflirage and uh, you must have observed that distillation involves heating of the raw material and therefore, the constituents which are thermolabile or sensitive towards heat, they are extracted with the help of enflirage. What is that? We will discuss in detail ahead, but by and large enflirage is further of two types, hot enflirage and cold enflirage. Then the fourth traditional technique is solvent extraction, wherein we use suitable solvent to extract out the essential oil and the plants which contain very small amount of essential oil, solvent extraction technique is largely used to extract that essential oil or the small quantities of the oil from the raw material. On the other hand, modern techniques include various modifications, various advancements or advanced techniques such as supercritical fluid extraction, microwave assisted extraction, ultrasound assisted extraction, pressurized solvent extraction and all these five techniques I have already discussed in my previous lectures. Though the focus of utilization of these techniques was largely on the other secondary metabolites, here we will be focusing on the extraction, on the usage of these techniques to extract out the volatile oils. Then we have solid phase micro extraction, phytosol method, head space trapping techniques and molecular distillation. Now, head space trapping technique as well as solid phase micro extraction, these are the two modern techniques which are largely used for the analytical studies of volatile oils. That is, they uh, in order to study the composition of the volatile oil, these two techniques are used. Now, we will discuss all these techniques in detail. Now, before we move on to the detailed discussion on these extraction techniques. First of all, I would like to mention certain parameters which help in determining which extraction technique would be suitable for our raw material. And this selection process of the extraction technique largely depends upon the sensitivity of the oil towards heat and water. Now, as I told you that volatile oil is mixture of components and these components can be broadly categorized into mono and sesquiterpenes and their oxygenative, ter, uh, oxygenative derivatives which we call them as mono and sesquiterpenoids. Now, amongst these uh, constituents, there are certain constituents which are more sensitive towards degradation whenever they are exposed to elevated temperatures and certain constituents are vulnerable towards the hydrolytic aspects whenever they are treated with water. So, if your raw material contains such kind of components, then obviously we are not going to extract out the oil which involves exposing of the raw material towards heat and water like hydro distillation or water distillation or simple water or steam distillation or steam distillation. So, if your fruit is, if your plant or the raw material is having such kind of uh, constituents in the volatile oil, then we cannot go with the distillation. This is just one example. Then we have volatility of the essential oil. As we discussed that oil is nothing but the mixture of various components. Therefore, if your oil is having 
more components which are having higher boiling points, then obviously we cannot extract uh, a good quality essential oil from those raw materials by simply enfleurage method or by simply expression method because we require heat in order to evaporate those constituent and then we can condense them. So therefore, in such uh, cases, distillation is method of choice. Next parameter is sol uh, water solubility of the essential oils. There are certain constituents like phenols which have high affinity for water. They are more soluble in water. So if we extract such kind of essential oil by using hydro distillation, then obviously since the constituents are more soluble in water, we are going to lose tremendous amount of the fragrant components to the water and the oil that will be obtained will be of poor quality in terms of its odor, in terms of its color as well. Another factor that helps in selecting an extraction technique is the cost of raw material. If your raw material is costly, then you cannot afford to lose volatile oil by incomplete extraction. Therefore, in order to extract out uh, in order to completely extract out the volatile oil from the raw material, you have to select a suitable technique. Oil value is another parameter that will help you in selecting the extraction technique. If oil is having high commercial value, then obviously you cannot afford to, to degrade the quality of that oil in terms of its constituent, in terms of its appearance, in terms of its fragrance. So accordingly, you have to select the appropriate extraction method that will not have any derogatory or damaging effect on its constituents. And last but not the least is the type of the raw material. Now if you are having a very hard material from which you want to extract out the oil, say for example roots, then accordingly you have to select an extraction technique which will uh, by which you can extract out the oil from that woody or the hard material. On the other hand, if you have a very delicate plant part like petals, flower petals, you cannot expose those flower petals to certain uh, stringent conditions of high elevated temperature or high water content because these are very, very delicate uh, uh, plant part or the raw material and can be easily damaged by higher temperature or excess of water. So for such kind of material, enfleurage method is of choice. So these are few points by which by, by carefully examining these points, you can select an appropriate extraction technique for your raw material. Now we move on to the first traditional extraction technique that is expression which is also known as cold expression because largely done at room temperature therefore it is also known as cold expression. Now the term expression means applying force upon and therefore this technique is largely used to extract out oils from the citrus fruits. We know that citrus fruits uh, I, and I will also discuss ahead the basic structure of the citrus fruits they contain oil cells which are embedded deep into their peels and therefore these peels must be expressed in order to rupture those oil cells and to release the oil from those peels. Now these citrus fruits are not, the oil from these citrus fruit is not extracted by using distillation <coughs> because the oils from the citrus fruit they are largely composed of aliphatic aldehydes and also the terpene aldehydes and these constituents are more vulnerable towards oxidation whenever they are heated in presence of water and whenever these aldehydic compounds get oxidized they get they get converted into carboxylic acids and once they are converted into carboxylic acid these acids then are responsible for the bad odor of the oil because the chemistry of the constituent present in the oil uh, changes altogether and this change in chemistry is largely not only responsible for the change in the odor of the oil but also change in the natural color of the oil 
and since the oils are being largely consumed by by the perfume and the cosmetic industry we cannot afford in in the change in the odor as well as the color of these oils and therefore citrus fruits are largely extracted with the help of expression methods now here you can uh, in this picture you can clearly see the structural components of a citrus fruit this is a half cut orange and the outermost region outermost layer we call it as flavido this flavido is also known as epicarp it is followed by or below flavido is the albedo region and this albedo region we call it also known as uh, mesocarp now mesocarp and epicarp they collectively form a region which we call it as pericarp and in the center is the present endocarp region which is largely composed of the juice cells so we know that whenever we we uh, squeeze the orange these juice cells present in the endocarp they get ruptured and the juice is released but here we are interested in the essential oils and essential oil cells are largely present in the flavido or the epicarp region of the fruit and these essential oil cells or the oil cells are embedded either they are present superficially on the epicarp region or they are embedded deep into the deepest layer of the flavido region and therefore expression method is used to rupture those oil cells now as i told you that expression techniques or the expression technique is further categorized into manual and the industrial or mechanical method and under manual method we had sponge method scodella method and aculey method so coming on to the first manual uh, expression method which is sponge method now in this uh, method the citrus fruits are cut into half and each half of the citrus fruit is manually picked and the endocarp region of this half is removed by a special spoon like apparatus we call it as rastrello now this spoon like apparatus has blunt spikes on its surface and by using this rastrello we remove the endocarp which is rich in the juice cells from the peel and once the peel is separated from this endocarp region it is dipped in water in order to further loosen up the peel and then it is turned inside out it means now the outer portion outer part uh, or the outermost region of the peel becomes the inner portion now the peels are then manually pressed or expressed and whatever oil that is released by expression is absorbed on a sponge and this process continues till the sponge is saturated with the oil now once the sponge gets filled with the oil it is squeezed into a bowl or a terracotta bowl which is known as concolina and this is how the oil is collected by using sponge method now since it's a manual traditional technique various drawbacks or limitation of these techniques are there and these are it is time consuming we have to first remove the endocarp carefully so that we don't destroy the uh, the the pericarp region then we have to manually press those peels therefore it is highly laborious method also and since as i told you that there are certain oil cells which are embedded deep into the pericarp region by manually pressing those oil cells are not properly ruptured and therefore there is a substantial loss of the oil and above all the oil that is obtained by the sponge method had a more fruity odor so these are few drawbacks or limitations of the sponge method next method is the scodella method this was slightly modified uh, from the sponge method and here uh, in place of that terracotta bowl a bowl was uh, modified and 
raised blunt spikes or ends were there on the inner wall of that bowl. There was a small hole at the bottom in the center of the bowl and this hole was then connected to the funnel. Now the peels are again removed from or separated from the endocarp region of the fruit and their peels are then dipped in water to loosen up, loosen them, then they are turned inside out and then peels are rubbed manually on those blunted ends. Now these blunts help in further rupturing of the oil cells and the oil trickles down uh, through the central hole into the funnel and then into the container. Now these blunt ends which were present on this container, inner side of the container, they were uh, then they are washed with a stream of water in order to remove the uh, any kind of oil that has been sticked onto these ends and later the oil, is, uh, the oil was separated from the water. Again this method is slow because it is manual and since you have to rub manually each and every peel on those blunt ends, it was quite laborious and the yield again by this method was low. So friends, in the next lecture, we will continue with the other techniques of expression method. Thank you.